William, you are looking pretty sleepy today. What do you have here for me today? Looks like you have dragged out my new Gerber Savvy. This is a brand new knife. I guess we're reviewing this one today. Is that what you want? All right, here we go. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about a knife that has created a lot of buzz recently. This is the Gerber Savvy. This represents a significant move up market for Gerber. Carbon fiber handles, 20, CV, 20 CV blade, uh, much, much higher quality materials than we're used to seeing for Gerber. My question is, does this knife measure up? Uh, I'm gonna do my, my standard review format, how a knife looks, feels, and works. We're gonna actually talk about how it works first. Uh, but first, first, I wanna show you that this is obviously aimed straight at the heart of anyone who loves the Benchmade 940. Uh, this is obviously a custom blade, but this is a Benchmade 940. Very similar in size, very similar in weight, very similar in overall feel, similar obvious in uh, layout with the axis lock. Uh, so this is definitely aimed at somebody who loves the Benchmade 940 and wants that kind of lightweight, uh, mid-size EDC knife. Uh, there is more cutting surface on the blade for the Gerber. It's a slightly thicker stock. Uh, it feels a little sturdier in the hand. So despite the fact that, you know, this the Benchmade is arguably a sturdier knife, this knife, it just has a little bit more substantial feel to it. I do like the fact that the Benchmade has a bit more girth right here where my index finger grabs it. This feels a little thin to me. It doesn't give me as good a grip, but there is more handle at the bottom. So I get a better grip this way to prevent from twisting on the Gerber. Uh, so some slight differences in hand feel, but this is definitely, this is definitely a direct competitor to the Benchmade 940. Similar construction, very similar liner shape, which I'll show you in a bit. But first of all, let's talk about how this knife works. So it works very smoothly. It's a lot like the Benchmade where there is, uh, it's, a, it's a washer knife, but they're very smooth, flippable washers. Even with this in a, in a flippable state like that, there's I mean, barely perceptible blade play. Uh, so it, it feels almost like bearings, which is a very good thing. This is not in the original pocket clip. Uh, I didn't, this one I got at a discount because it did not have a pocket clip. So I can't comment on that in the review, but uh, normally that's that's silver. So the edge when I got this, when they're talking about how it works was very steep. Uh, it was almost like an ax. I, so I did my edge retention testing. This only scored 125 cuts in my edge retention test. So I said, well, maybe that's a blade geometry issue. I'm actually gonna go ahead and reprofile this blade. So I reprofiled the entire edge to a more, more shallow apple seed edge. Uh, and I redid my edge retention testing. It only made it 75 cuts. So removing the, the, the material from the shoulders of the blade actually made this worse uh, and, and not better. That is very much underperforming for 20 CV and it's extremely underperforming for a $250 knife. That is to me a deal breaker, right? This should be, this should be up in the 300 range, not, not 75. Uh, that's just indicative of the fact that when this knife was made, they did not do the heat treat on this steel, right? Uh, and there's no easy fix for that. There's, there's no way you can get around that. It's just never going to hold an edge well because the steel has not been manufactured and, and heat treated properly. Uh, so that is a big, big problem uh, with this knife. Flat surface cutting, there's enough of a, a belly to this blade where you don't catch just the tip, so it cuts better on a flat surface than you would think for such a straight blade. Uh, rope obviously does very well because there is a lot of relatively flat surface on the blade there. So overall, this is a fantastic blade shape for an EDC. So the fact that it doesn't hold the edge well is just kind of a tragedy. Pocket clip is good. You know, this is this is the shape of the original pocket clip, even if it's not the original one. Uh, so from what I can tell, it, they did a good job of making sure it's the right type of pocket clip for this knife. But again, I didn't test the actual original one. Uh, feel of this knife, we've already talked about a little bit. It feels a little narrow to me up here, but it feels really good back here. Uh, they've done a good job of, of rounding edges and things. 
There's a little bit of an edge to the inside of the handles here, but it's nothing, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. I like what they have done with the access lock. So there's a, a little bit of a kernel right here, a little bit of a, a grip on the access lock, but it's not as sharp or as grabby as what you would find on a Benchmade. There's one, one rung instead of two, and that just makes it a bit more comfortable. It feels a bit more smooth and refined. So I like how this knife feels. Uh, I just wish they had left a little bit more thickness here. Looks, uh, obviously this knife is a looker. The non-woven carbon fiber, to me that's a, that's a really good look, especially when the whole thing is done that way. I love the look and feel of a Warren Cliff blade. Uh, I like what they have done with the thumb stud. So this, instead of making a two-piece thumb stud like on most Benchmades, where it threads through and it threads into itself on the other side. What Gerber has done is actually made this a steel bolt and they have just given it a, a hex bolt there and they've threaded it directly into the blade. So while that leaves you a little bit of a less refined look on this side, that's a much sturdier configuration and it's less likely to strip and it's a whole lot more easier to switch sides if you're a lefty. So I actually like this, even though it doesn't quite give the, the clean look that you would expect on a $250 knife. Now, another issue with some of the looks, if you see right down here, there are some small voids uh, in that carbon fiber. It's kind of hard to see. It's not nearly as bad as the Schrade Alpha series that I reviewed recently, but again, it's not quite what you would expect on a $250 knife. Let's go ahead and talk about some disassembly here because there's some interesting things that Gerber did, some kind of advancements that they have made over your traditional axis lock design. And I want to bring those out because they did some good stuff here. Uh, this is T6 hardware on the pivot. I do not like that. Uh, this is the part, this is the bolt that's most likely to strip and it's the one that you're gonna need the most torque on and it's the one that you're gonna adjust the most often. That should be like Microtech has done recently, a T25, right? There's no reason why that needs to be a little baby T6. This is very much internally like a Benchmade 940. I'm actually gonna grab some parts from a Benchmade 940 and show you how similar once I get this apart. Uh, I'm gonna untension the lock there and see if I can pop the pivot out, I can. Uh, good manufacturing tolerances there. That's not always easy to do on most knives. You can see on the tang here, they've left plenty of material for the narrow kind of EDC style blade that that is. Like that a lot. I should be able to now pop off this side. There we go, of the knife. So this is a Benchmade 940. This is the liners from a Benchmade 940. You can see that is very similar internally. They've done a similar length of the liner to give you the leverage on the handle to avoid uh, over torquing anything. Uh, they've done a very similar arrangement with the stop pin and everything. Uh, so lots of pages out of the 940 book there that Gerber has taken. They have made some improvements, however. You can see on the Omega Springs they have given this a full loop. What that does is it means that the, the spring is not flexing as much per millimeter of spring, which means those should last longer. So that's kind of an important advancement there. I like that. Gerber has done a good job there. Uh, I do have to, ah, oh, I forgot. This is an access lock knife. So I have to take off the pocket clip on the other side and I have to take off the entire other scale in order to get the spring off so that I can get the axis lock out so that I can take the knife apart. It's one thing that's a little bit of a pain on axis lock knives. For some reason, this knife, this bolt on my knife uh, is silver. I don't know why that is. I have a feeling that might have been a pocket clip bolt. Uh, don't know. So here is the other side. Now I can take the other Omega spring out. I guess they're not quite Omega Springs because this isn't a Benchmade, but now I can pop the axis lock out. And now I can show you the other cool thing that Gerber has done here. 
So what they have done on their washers is instead of just using standard round washers, they've anchored the washers to the stop pin and made them this kind of eccentric shape. What that does is you can see it gives more surface area along the tang of the knife for the washer to interface with. What this does is it means you don't need as much tension on the sides of the knife in order to prevent blade play. That has allowed Gerber to make this a very smoothly functioning knife, even without bearings. So I like some of the things they've done here. I like the washers. I like the advancement in what they've done with the Omega Springs. They've done some good work on their engineering here. Unfortunately, that brings me to my conclusions for this knife. So one of the big problems with this knife is price. Uh, and other American made knives in 20 CV steel, like the Hogue Decca. Hogue Decca has uh, g mascus handles, 20 CV blade, $149.99. Uh, the Zero Tolerance ZT0460 tie, 20 CV blade, titanium handles, $164.99. Uh, the Gerber Savvy carbon fiber handles, 20 CV blade, $249.99. So it's about $100 more expensive than comparable American-made knives with the same blade steel. Those knives have better heat treatments on their blade steel and they don't get dull after 75 cuts. So unfortunately, even with the advancements that Gerber has made here, this knife is not worth the price. I do not recommend this knife. Save your money on this one. Hopefully Gerber will someday make a better version uh, with a better heat treatment. Uh, for now, if you gotta have a knife similar to this, I would stick with the Benchmade 940. That is my review, hope it is helpful. Like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, and have a nice day.